What's up guys? This is my first real video on this channel besides me uploading my TikToks. I feel like this was a great topic to discuss because I'm probably the biggest Brad Holmes stan here. And I always have a fascination with the draft, so I figure why not, you know, start here with a video. So I guess let's begin. So I do want to give out some honorable mentions that didn't make the top 10, but I feel like they should get some recognition. The first one I would probably give is Derek Barnes. If you would have told me Derek Barnes would take a good year three step, I would have probably called you crazy. Derek was drafted in the fourth round from Purdue as a guy who played primarily edge, but a little bit of linebacker as well. He kind of reminded me of Jared Davis coming out of the draft in terms of like he had all the physical tools, but maybe not so much above the neck ability. However, Calvin Shepard has done a great job of developing Derek Barnes into what he is today. He's played really well at times as a stack backer, and he's shown very explosive flashes of him just attacking downhill and being physical. I think the thing with Barnes just missing the list is that he just came on into his third year, and I think we just need to see more of him to make him a top draft pick, so to speak, for Brad Holmes. Next up, we got Josh Paschal, a second round pick from Kentucky. The biggest thing holding back Josh from, you know, the top 10 is his durability, but when he's healthy and what I saw from him in 2022 and brief moments of 23, he's been a fine addition to the D-line in the rotation as he sets a hard edge opposite of Hutch, just caught causing chaos within the line of scrimmage. I feel like Josh will ultimately become a great role player rotational piece of this defense. And my last honorable mention is JMO. I know people are still mixed about JMO. These last few games at the time of this recording, he seems to be reaching the vision of what this team has for him. He's shown big playability and he's still a young player. I'm still holding out hope for JMO because the talent speaks for himself and that was never the problem. The problem was confidence and consistency. Now let's get to the top 10. <laughs> Finally! At number 10, we have James Houston. If you would have told me that we would draft a pass rush specialist all the way back in the sixth round, I probably would have laughed in your face. But then again, it's Brad Holmes. His ability to find a guy like James speaks to Brad's ability to find talent even on day three of the draft. When James Houston became a starter late into the year, starting on Thanksgiving Day versus the Bills in 2022, he would end up racking eight sacks in his first six games. And beyond the box score numbers, James flashes high end pass rush abilities. I know Houston has been injured as of late, but I fully expect him to have an impact when he returns for the last part of the season in 2023. At number nine, we have Malcolm Rodriguez. Rodrigo! Rodrigo was another guy that Brad found in the sixth round of the 22 draft. Malcolm immediately became a day one starter and started 15 games as a rookie. Now, Malcolm isn't some all pro pro world player by no means, but he's also played very well as a sixth round pick as a linebacker. He can easily be labeled as a starting caliber linebacker, but what seems to separate him and James Houston is that not only he's been a, gr a good special teams player, but also he's been recently a fullback on offense and he's actually been solid as a fullback. That's a lot of versatility for a six round draft pick. That's insane value Brad got there in the sixth round. At number eight, we have Aleem McNeil. Aleem was a third round pick and came out as a nose tackle, but like Dan Campbell said, when you watch him maneuver and move and take an edge and you're like, okay, this kid I think is going to be able to do some pass rush now too. This isn't just some anchor for the run game. Like, I think there's more to this kid. We all and Dan is not wrong. Aleem started off as a solid nose tackle and by year three, he's turned into an average to above average D line that can affect the pass game as well. In just his third year, he's already posting career highs in sacks with five total sacks. In his first two years, he only had three. It's always great to see when your young guys get better as they age. At number seven, we have one of my favorite players in Kirby Joseph. Harvard, J. Kirk, Kirby was a third round pick in the 2022 draft. Kirby has shown the ability to be a great playmaker in the secondary. Kirby's still young and learning to play the safety position beyond making plays, but no team will ever say no to a ball hawk. Even if he's just a playmaker in the secondary, that's just still a big asset to this football team. At number six, we have Brian Branch. I want to put him so much higher on this list, but man, how the hell did he fall to the second round? Oh right, he had a bad combine. <laughs> Branch has been everything you want out of a nickel slot. His Falcons and Bears tape shows just how explosive and how much of a great tackler Brian Branch is. Seriously, look at this clip. Brian Branch. I'm so glad Brad traded up for him because these types of football players don't grow in trees. Branch has all pro potential and could easily be our second best player behind Hutch on our defense for years to come. At number five, we have Sam Laporta. The best tight end in the league. 
The best way I can describe Sam Laporta is that he's the Amon Ra at the tight end position. The dude is dangerous in those short to medium situations where he'll catch it for 7 yards and gain another 20 yards due to him being an absolute football player taking on will and tacklers. I didn't do much homework on the tight ends for the 23 draft, but seeing the other rookie tight ends across the league, Sam is easily the best rookie tight end. Sam has easily Pro Bowl, All Pro potential, and we got him in the second round. At number 4, we have Jameer Gibbs. I never would have thought we would have taken Gibbs at 12, but I'm so happy we did anyway. I'm kind of biased because running back is my favorite position to watch, and when you watch him and he has space to work with, you hold your breath. He is a nightmare for opposing linebackers, both in the run and the pass. Gibbs has a chance to rival, if not surpass, Christian McCaffrey in terms of the ultimate offensive weapon in the NFL. He's that talented. People criticize Holmes for taking a running back at 12, but like Brad Holmes said, we didn't acquire a running back in the first round. We acquired an elite weapon to keep our offense explosive. In and that's what the modern NFL is all about. Offensive weapons. Gibbs easily has Pro Bowl All-Pro potential. At number three, we have Aiden Hutchinson. It's definitely fair to say that this was a no-brainer pick thanks to Jacksonville pulling a Matt Millen back in 2005. But Brad could also made this mistake too. The best GMs always take the best player available because a lot, and I mean a lot of GMs besides Matt Millen over the years have messed up those easy no-brainer picks. Hutch is on his way to becoming possibly a top six, top seven edge rusher in this league as the dude is a pressure machine and always seems to be affecting the play on a consistent basis. I feel like for Hutch to go from very good to elite player, he needs to close better and get more sacks because I mentioned before, sacks are still big time play and very valuable to a defense but make no mistake Hutch is still that dude he obviously has all pro potential and not just pro bowls at number two we arguably had Brad Holmes most important pick but still a great pick in Penny Sewell again Sewell was a no-brainer pick but at the same time the great GMs always nailed the easy picks too Sewell is without a doubt the best right tackle in the NFL and is without a doubt the Lions best player on the roster dude is an absolute nightmare in the run game and is very elite in his fast blocking the dude has shut down the best edge rushers in the NFL has to offer. The dude is only 23 and is already a big time leader for this team. He is basically a home run pick on and off the field. Sewell easily has the most Hall of Fame potential on this team and it wouldn't shock me if he's in Canton one day. And finally at number one we had the Sun God himself, Amon Ross St. Brown. Everyone who watches the NFL knows about Amon Ross St. Brown at this point but for good reason. The dude is easily a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL. He's arguably the best slot receiver in the game but what makes him special is that brad holmes found an all pro wide receiver in the fourth round this is why brad holmes is brad holmes because if he was always going to be this good why didn't our teams not see this sure stuff like this happens all the time but it's usually when you have an elite talent evaluator in the gmc amara is super consistent super quarterback friendly and probably the most clutch third down receiver in the nfl currently amara's yak ability is just insane 